What's up guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and you are watching the Spectrum AR6370 programming series. In this installment we're going to be discussing how to perform the first time safe setup using forward programming in your AR6370. Before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you're always made aware when new videos come out on the channel. Now let's get started. So we're going to be doing the first time safe setup. In order to do that we're going to need to go to our transmitter and we're going to go to Model Adjust, Forward Programming, Gyro Settings, and at the bottom we see First Time Safe Setup. Before setting up safe, a flight mode channel must be configured. Now we've already set up all the flight modes that we're going to be using, uh, and that was covered in Part 8 of the series, so go back and watch Part 8 if you haven't already, and that'll tell you how to set up all the flight modes. And, uh, and then you'll be able to continue on with this step. Now, because we've already done the flight modes, we can go ahead and hit continue here. You'll see up at the top, it says flight mode one. We actually want to be on flight mode three. Flight mode three is where we're gonna have safe. So we're gonna flip our switch to flight mode three. And it says select desired flight mode switch position to adjust settings for each flight mode. So we're in flight mode three now, which is where we want safe. And we're gonna go ahead and move forward by clicking next. AS3X gains must be tuned and active in safe flight modes to help reduce wobble. All right, we've already got our AS3X gain set up for uh, the model. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. All right, and at this step, it is our attitude trim, and that tells the model basically how we want the model to sit in level flight. Now, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either go in and adjust those manually by clicking the box on the roll and pitch line. So right now we see it says negative one. We can click on that and we can actually tell that whatever we want and click OK. We're going to reset both of these to zero. That is the manual way that you could set the attitude. So if you have to make some minor adjustments, say you're at the field, you're flying, you go into safe mode and it's maybe tilted down a little bit. Um, you can go in there and you can manually adjust those. For this first time setup, what we're going to do is you see at the top of the screen here, it says level model and capture attitude, uh, where, you know, we're going to set the model on a stand and we're going to allow the, uh, the receiver to tell us what it thinks it's at at that point in time. The model is in a pretty good position right now as far as pitch and roll goes. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that level model and capture attitude. All right, we can see that it has a roll of negative three and a pitch of negative 18. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. On this screen, this is where we're gonna be setting up the type of safe mode that we're gonna be using for this particular flight mode. So we're in flight mode three, which is where we wanna have safe programmed. Now, when we go through this, you're gonna see two different options. So we're gonna go ahead and click where it says inhibit uh, next to safe mode right under the flight mode. And as we go through those options, you're gonna see two different safe modes. One is self-level angle demand and one is envelope. Now the, uh, the quick explanation of those is self-level angle demand is looking at what the function is of your, your aileron stick, you know, so the right stick as we adjust the ailerons, uh, when, when we're flying normally, you know, when we move the stick to the left or to the right, you know, so right now I'm giving the model left aileron and you can see that left aileron going up, uh, which would, you know, roll the plane to the left. Uh, that aileron is going to stay there as I keep that stick pushed to the left, and when I let the stick go, the aileron goes back to its center position. When I am in self-level angle demand, although my, my aileron stick does control the ailerons to some degree, what I am doing there is I am demanding a specific angle roll angle from the airplane. Uh, and same with the elevators. I am demanding a specific pitch uh, from my elevator, you know, from the, from the gyro. So when I have my roll angle set to angle demand, if I have that roll limit set to say 50 degrees, if I 
move the stick halfway, I am demanding roughly 25 degrees of roll angle. Now what will happen is as I move that stick halfway to the left, the airplane will start to roll and when it reaches 25 degrees, the airplane will stop rolling and I have to hold the stick at that halfway point and when I let it go, the airplane will go back to straight and level flight. Same with elevator. You know, if I have it set to say 40 degrees of down elevator and I push down on the elevator, when I push down on that elevator, halfway, it's going to pitch the airplane down roughly 20 degrees and then that elevator is going to center. And I have to hold it there and then when I let the stick go, the airplane will go back to straight and level flight. Where normally, if we hold left aileron, the airplane is going to roll to the left and keep rolling and rolling and rolling until we let the stick go and then the, uh, they will go back to center. So that's kind of how angle demand and self-leveling work. Uh, it works just like the beginner mode on, say, an E-Flight Apprentice. So if you've ever flown an Apprentice before in beginner mode, that is exactly how self-level angle demand works. Now, our other option is envelope, where, you know, my ailerons and my elevator work exactly the same way that they would if I were uh, in an unrestricted flight mode, just with AS3X only and no safe. So the difference between envelope and self-level angle demand is an envelope uh, it works the same way as, say, the intermediate mode on an apprentice, where the control surfaces, you know, when I apply left elevator, or when I apply, you know, left aileron, uh, I can make movements, but what will happen is if I set, say, a limit of 80 degrees of roll, when it reaches 80 degrees, it will stop. So, I, you know, I still have to make the corrections myself to get it back to level flight, but it won't let me go beyond 80 degrees. So when it gets to 80 degrees, it will center the aileron. Same with pitch. If I put, say, a 45 degree up angle limit on, uh, on the elevator, you know, on the, on the pitch axis, when I apply up elevator, the airplane will not go past a 45 degree angle. So that's how our envelope flight mode works. Now, when I am uh, setting up my model, I want that third flight mode to be self-leveling. So we're gonna go back to self-level angle demand and we're gonna hit okay. And now we're gonna set our angle limits that we want enabled when we're in self-leveling mode. Now, I uh, am fine with 60 degrees uh, roll for left and right. Um, Pitch down, I don't know that I wanted to be able to pitch down all the way to 40 degrees, and I don't know that I wanted to pitch up all the way to 50. So we're going to change pitch down to 30 degrees. That's something I'm a little more comfortable with. And we're going to change pitch up to 40. All right, so with the configuration as we have it set right now, the airplane isn't going to roll more than 60 degrees left or right. It can't pitch up more than 40 degrees and it can't pitch down more than 30. So that is good for me. I like that. Let's go ahead and click next and we're going to hit apply and that will finish our first time safe setup. At this point, the receiver is going to reset. So you'll see it does two sets of dances when you have safe mode enabled. On the screen, we say receiver is rebooting. Select model adjust to return to menu. So we're going to hit model adjust. And that'll take us back to our dashboard on the iX12. When we first plug in our model with AS3X enabled, uh, you plug in your battery to your speed control and after a few moments, you will see the ailerons, the elevator, and the rudder do like a little dance. They'll twitch a few times. Um, and they'll do that one time when you are in AS3X only. 
If you have AS3X and safe, they will do that dance and then it'll wait for like a second and then it'll do another set of, uh, of dancing. And that's how you can verify that you've actually got safe mode programmed into your AR637T. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the battery back in and watch for the dance. <clears throat> that's once, that's twice. So now we know that we have safe mode successfully programmed into our model. Once you've completed the first time safe setup, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all your control surfaces are moving in the expected directions. Anytime that you are using any type of gyro stabilization unit, if the control surfaces are moving, opposite of what you expect it's always a recipe for disaster so make sure that anytime you're manipulating any gyro not just the ar6370 or ar636 that your control surfaces are moving the way you expect them to otherwise it will result in you having a terrible accident with your airplane if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments below and i'll be sure to get back with you as soon as i can if you're interested in purchasing an AR637T or any of the products that you see featured in the videos, be sure to check the links in the description. We have affiliate links in the description, and when you use those links, it sends a small commission back to the channel, and we certainly appreciate your support. Other ways that you can support the channel include uh, sending donations via PayPal, and there's a link in the description for PayPal donations as well. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. And turn on the notifications so you're always made aware when new videos come out on the channel. Like always, I appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.